Good day, and we're going to be covering design of beams in shear now. So when you've got a steel member which is experiencing a shear force, how do we go about considering it? And you'll see there are two approaches, either a relatively simplified shear approach or a more complicated rational shear design. And so if we start out with an I-beam or a channel section, just the cross sections here, and then we'll go on to a rectangular I or H-beam about its weak axis and T-section. If we apply a shear force, you end up with a shear distribution that looks something like this. So it builds up, so it's zero at the end, and then it progressively builds up along the section, and then you have a curved section like that all the way through, so a curved stress distribution. Same with a, flan a parallel flange channel, so this is an H or an I section, and then this is a parallel flange channel, PFC or even PC, depending on where you look, how it's referred to. Um, there is our stress building up, and then our stress building up, and then because there is a stress buildup, then we can go not from zero, we start at some value, curved distribution, and then out. But the nice thing about this distribution is that we can approximate and make our lives a lot easier. Because to go calculate the stresses everywhere along the section is a real pain. So what we can do is just average it out. We take an average stress distribution like that, and then we now just design for that averaged stress value there and uh, we end up with a nice simplified design. But the problem is, is when we don't have a flange both sides, perpendicular to the direction of the applied loads, we've got a problem. For instance, if we've got just a rectangular section, a block, an I section or an H section about its weak axis, a T, or anything else, when we don't have two flanges, there isn't that sort of time for the stress to build up. So we start from zero. So we start from zero and we go out. We start from zero and go out and go out. And same thing here, there is a bit of buildup. So we do have a stress buildup and a stress buildup, but not from the bottom. So we end up with a curved profile. And what you'll see in all of these is the maximum stress is always along the centroid. So our maximum stress there is the centroid. So we can at least pick up one point, zoom in on that and check the stress at that point. But we have to go about a rational design process to get the, the, the design completed. We can't use the simplified approach because we've got to check the maximum stress and limit that stress to a certain value, where here we get a shear resistance straight away. Here we check centroid, zoom in it, we've got to do a couple more calcs, we get the, the stress at that value and then we go about getting the resistance. So just when it comes to it, be very careful to know where are you in the design process. Are you with the simplified shear design? Or do you have to carry out a more rational design procedure where you have to calculate the stresses um, through the section, or normally the easiest is you just pick the maximum stress, which will be at the centroid. But you have to then deal with stresses explicitly rather than just calculating a, a resistance directly. So that gives an overview of then the basics of shear design. Shear is more, one of the more simple um, uh, types of design procedures to do, to do um, especially with an I section, H section channel. With this, it is a bit more complicated, so you've got to be careful. Shear in steel doesn't normally govern. Um, in your average rolled sections, your I-beams and H-beams, shear is not normally critical. However, it does start becoming critical when these webs start becoming more slender. For instance, in um, built-up sections like plate girders, when this starts to become very deep, 800 moles a meter, 2 meters, then the design of this, this web becomes very critical in the, the overall calculations. You may need to start adding web stiffness, etc. The other place where shear becomes a problem is when you've got short beams with high point loads because then the shear uh, force is very high versus the bending moment. So those are places you may have to look out and you know that shear is likely to govern your design. As I said, slender webs, um, plate girders, built up sections, and then high shear forces, which normally is in your shorter beams with high point loads, uh, for instance, in industrial structures. So that gives an overview of shear design and general procedures for calculating it. Thank you.